G'day, it's Adam, VK4GHZ. I get asked the question, will one of my K3NG based rotator controller boards work with the Yaesu G5400? So in this video, we're going to look at some circuit diagrams and see how these things work. Stick around because the answer's coming up. Disclaimer, I have a Yaesu G5500, so all the information for the G5400 is coming from the instruction manual. So let's take a look at that. Um, this is actually a combined manual for the 5400 and the 5600. The, G, the uh, G5400, the only difference is, and we can see it's got the, the external, the eight pin external connector on both of them. The uh, G5400 uses the KR400 as the azimuth uh, motor and it doesn't have a motor start capacitor in it, whereas the G5600 variant uses uh, what, a 600X um, motor, I'm not familiar with that, and there is a motor start capacitor. So let's take a look at the schematic that interests us. Now for the sake of clarity, I've cleaned this up and we'll have a look at that. All right, this is the bit that interests us. So taking a look at the schematic, We've got our up, down, right and left switches all here. Over here is the remote connector. We'll come to that in a minute. Um, however, the common of all these switches goes to ground. Now, if we manually activate the up switch, for instance, this is the one I have highlighted here, we'll see it puts a ground on this side of the 4.7K resistor. The other side of the resistor goes to the base of a PNP transistor. It's emitter. Uh, through a low value resistor goes to the 13 volt rail, 13 volt rail, it is bad, it is not regulated at all, it's up and down like a bride's nighty. So anyway, when we activate the, the, the up switch, it will turn that transistor on, which will then activate the relay, which then provides power to the relevant motor windings. Now also going to that 4.7k resistor, you'll see a diode, we'll, we'll bust this out. This is the one for remote up control, it goes to the connector and you'll see on the connector it goes to ground as well. So what's happening with your external remote control? It's simply grounding that pin. So the up switch and activating the uh, external up control is doing exactly the same thing. It's effectively turning on a PMP transistor and activating the relay. Okay, let's take a look at the G5500. We've got the instruction manual here. We'll just scroll down, we come to the schematic. We need to flip that clockwise. Now this is the, um, the bit that interests us and we'll look at a cleaned up version of that schematic. Again for clarity I've uh, removed all the other bits that aren't relevant to this discussion. So over here you can see the remote connector. Um, these are our up, down, right and left switches, the common of which goes to ground. So when we manually activate the up switch I've highlighted the path. It's going to ground this 4.7k resistor. Uh, which goes to the base of a PMP transistor, the emitter of which goes to a uh, 75 ohm resistor and up to the 13 volt rail. Likewise, the remote control port through a diode over here and it goes to the remote connector and again, all that remote connector is doing is taking that to ground. So even though there's quite a few years difference between the 5400 and the 5500, especially the later build 5500s, I think, which Yasu built up to um, early 2020 or late 2019, I believe, the circuit is exactly the same. Let's take a look at the newer G5500 DC instruction manual. Now, Yasu don't include the schematic. Thank you, Yasu, for that. Um, but it does have the familiar 8-pin DIN external control connector, which is wired up exactly the same as the older 5500 and 5400, 5600 series rotators. All right, this video wouldn't be complete if we didn't take a look at the Yaesu GS232A computer interface. It's Yaesu's hideously expensive interface that created a, uh, a market for homebrew interfaces. Thank you, Yaesu. So I'm just gonna scroll down and we'll notice on the back here, see, how, see this here, the G5400, G5600 and G5500 all connect to the same GS232 interface. So the connections are absolutely identical. All right, this is taking a look at my own G5500 remote control interface board. And as you can see, I'm using BC847 MPN transistors from the microcontroller. These just get switched to ground. This is the open collector. 
and all these uh, go to the external control of the 5500. So we've got counterclock, clockwise, down and up. Okay, I hope that answers any questions you may have had. It looks like the G5400 along with the 5600 and even the newer G5500 DCs will work just fine with any controller built for a G5500. Look, they all do much the same thing. They just pull those control lines down to ground, either by an open collector transistor or an open drain FET. That's, that's all that's involved. Coincidentally, I happen to have two PC controller interface boards available. One is specifically for the G5500 and another one is more of a universal type board. You can even drive a linear actuator via PWM with it. They're available on the VK4GHZ.com shop and you'll see all the details there. Until the next video, stay safe and we'll see you then.